Because when I looked through an iPad yesterday and seen where you oh, yeah. scratched and signed your name and scratched over here and put what your official title is for the county now, as opposed to what it used to be, uh, you know, it just doesn't look good for us. It looks prepared. It looks like we're unprofessional to me well, when, when you go scratching through stuff. I mean, it just doesn't I, look I, good. We didn't prepare the form, so I couldn't, I couldn't get they prepared the form to the person that they thought were going to sign and that's what I'm trying to get to here who is going to sign these things and, and I also think Pam should be the one to do that so if I could have a motion on the board I'll do a motion on um, what we've discussed to have the uh, PW FEMA go totally from the engineer to the emergency management director and have them take care of it we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Sanders do I have a second second I was second guess, by Commissioner Massey. Discussion. Do you want her to resign the ones I've already signed? No, that's fine, Alan. I'm trying to find a way forward. In right? the future. Not going back. In the future. Moving In the forward. Future. And that's yeah. there's, I'll say there's one more PW that, I'm, that I had intended to sign tomorrow morning. I will wrap up out of your point. Well, that's right. I mean, so, so uh, let me in just the say future, this, you need to get with me and sit down and discuss exactly right, what's right. going on. So, so from now on, from, from 2017 on, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wrap up this one just because I've done all the negotiations with FEMA, and I understand, and I'm going to talk about it this morning. Okay, but but mm -hmm. could we amend your motion to include that Clay and Alan get with Pam and they have a sit to and, and explain what things are going on and how things should proceed and. And kind of get Pam brought up to speed and accustomed to what we're trying to do. Uh, you, you, you good with that, Clay? Yeah, you mean, I made mean my motion. We hadn't got a second on it yet, so uh, I made mean my motion. We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Sanders. Do we have a second? Second. Second I'll by Commissioner second. Massey. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all opposed? That motion carries. Does the commissioners have anything for Ms. Pam? <laughs> Thank you, Pam. <clears throat> Next on the agenda would be Mr. Eric Lovestrand, Extension to Office Director. Good morning, Commissioners. You have our extension written report, and I don't have anything in addition for you to take care of business wise for us today. Any questions from the board to Mr. Eric on the extension? There being no questions there, thank you for coming in. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next would be Ms. Deborah Belcher, CDBG uh, report. If Deborah walks up to the podium, let me, uh, there's an item that she's really here to talk about, I believe. So I'm going to read it off. Uh, this is item number three off of uh, Michael Marone's report. Uh, and so this will be sort of rolled in, hopefully, Deborah, in your discussion. So item number three on Michael Marone's report is board action to authorize the chairman's signature on a DEO modification agreement with the county for the CDBG housing program, which is what Deborah's here to talk about. Mark Carrington has reviewed the changes to the agreement, with the biggest change being the addition of a deliverable page and a list of applicable deliverable tasks. These changes are necessary to bring the agreement into compliance with state law. So if you can just kind of brief them on that. Yeah, it? the DEO is modifying all the grant agreements. Um, it's because Department of Financial Services has, well, I'll just, just say that they have made a decision. DFS has decided that they want certain things in the contracts and they've listed uh, tasks and that kind of thing. Uh, there's no substantive uh, change to what the county's obligations are uh, under the project and um, I recommend that you go ahead and approve uh, the modification. Uh, is a DEO initiated modification <coughs> number one to subgrant agreement. It says in our paperwork that Mark Kierden has reviewed the changes to the agreement. Yes. He and I both have have reviewed it. So moved. We have a motion on the floor by <coughs> Commissioner Lockley. Second. Second by Commissioner Massey. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Okay, and since Mark and Michael are both out today, I'll I can collect the uh, two signed originals and take them, get them to DEO for you. Um, and I also submitted a report to you. Um, the uh, the action item is to approve the uh, mobile home rehabilitation application from Pamela Bathus, 109 Long Road, Apalachicola, subject to final uh, review. 
Yeah. So moved. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Lockley. Second. Second by Commissioner Massey. Any further discussion? Give me that name again, please, ma'am. Pam Bathus. And uh, just to let you know, um, we are we're in the process of soliciting uh, proposals from mobile home dealers for five homes that you've already approved. Um, those names are, are in your report um, under, um, let's see here, under item five. And we had the pre-bid walkthrough yesterday. There were three vendors that attended. Uh, one of them was, an a was not able to attend, and I told him I could walk him through this afternoon. So I'm in encouraged that we're going to get some good proposals. <coughs> Um, these will be the first five mobile home replacements. We've done, we've completed a rehab. We are, I'm in the process of doing some um, rehab write-ups now, but these will be the first five replacements. And after we get these bids in, we'll know whether we have enough for one more replacement or if, or if it's just gonna be rehabs from this point out. So that will be um, uh, a major milestone in terms of, you know, getting our funds obligated and that bids will be due um, February 27th and we'll review them for uh, price of course but also quality of construction and how well the individual homes meet the needs of the individual homeowners uh, for example one is really needs a lot of accessibility features um, due to her condition Another needs some accessibility, but not as much as the other. Uh, so there's just different um, <coughs> needs for each home. So um, we're doing our best to balance all those factors. And we'll give you a recommendation. Um, I don't know if we'll have it ready for the first board meeting in March. If we, if we can, we'll, we'll give it to you then. And if not, um, it'll be the second board meeting in March. Can I ask you okay. what? Mr. Chairman's point of order, you have a motion to second on the mobile home application. The, the board has not yet voted. We do have a motion to second. Any further discussion on that motion to second? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. All opposed, that motion carries. Commissioner Lockman. Yeah. Um, you said y'all gonna replace the, have y'all replaced any so far? This, this will be the first replacement y'all doing? Right. Like we, the program started, yes, right? we've been we've been trying to get what we needed from the dealers to part of the, part of the problem we've had is, um, of course, we're in a wind zone three and not all homes are built for that. And in addition, three of these first five are in exposure D locations. And that throws a whole different level into the game um, because not all manufacturers provide exposure D compliant um, homes. Okay. Well, that's good sound. And I also uh, will need today to um, order a survey. Uh, after talking with the bidders, we really, I, I gave them on uh, Francis Hunting's home on Patton, Patton Street, Patton Drive in uh, yeah. uh, East Point. She's in a floodplain, and I gave them the Google Earth uh, elevation of about eight feet. And there, the BFE there is 14 feet. So I gave them the information I had without going through the process of doing a survey because I'm going to want them to do a survey at the time they set the mobile homes and provide an elevation certificate. And so I didn't want to go through a whole bunch of survey ahead of time, but they are asking that we get them uh, more information to because. We're going to be dealing with an engineered foundation and a lot of lot of complications on her site. So I I asked for quotes yesterday. I I've only gotten one so far. Um, that I asked got one from Roddenberry. I asked for one from Edwin Brown, and as of this morning, I still hadn't gotten a response. So, um, but it, if you will authorize me to order a survey. Um, <laughs> That way, we will be able to get more information to the dealers so they can better prepare their bids. I make a motion of 
she can order a survey. Second. We have a motion and a second discussion. Attorney. Mr. Chairman, if I might, what is the value that you estimate for the, the surveying services? There's I, a state statute that might apply and require surveys. Yeah, there's one that came, it, it's for single residential. One of them <coughs> came in at $700 for a topo, which seems high, uh, but we'll see what but the other one comes in. This is surveying services on one single house. One lot. single house. Okay, that's right. good. You're good. Yeah. State law would not require you to bid out something of that value. Right. Yeah, we have a motion and a second on the floor. This going to, can I say? Uh, yes. I only, I guess, you, is you getting a lot of unexpected stuff and is that going, what my question, I guess my question is, is that going to count into your money with this unexpected revenue coming up? The unexpected expenses. No, yeah. actually I had expected, I mean, I didn't expect it was going to be 700 plus going back out again for another elevation certificate um, but this is so far this is the only one we have in the floodplain okay. and that, and that, the floodplain is what's requiring this survey right. and, and right. the topo because the dealer has to elevate that trailer mm -hmm. in order to meet the requirements of the, of the right. floodplain and, yes okay. any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. all opposed that motion carries Okay, thank Does you very anyone much. Anyone have any more questions for Ms. Deborah? No. There'll be no further questions. Thank you for coming in and presenting us the information. Okay, thank you. Next will be Mr. Alan Pierce. I believe all interviews are for table. Uh, this is the advisory board BOA? Yes. This has been tabled? That's my understanding. Yes, yes. Well, it hasn't been tabled. Yeah, the be request for tabling has been forwarded by, by Mr. Bourbon <laughs> Floyd's project. Uh, I'll speak received an email from Mr. Carrington that uh, Mr. Garlick had made a request to table this matter for today. Uh, I believe that, that I've communicated with each of you uh, individually by email uh, with that information and my recommendation that, that the board would allow the applicant to table this matter. My understanding is they want to table it until the first meeting in March. That's their, their goal. Now, whether they'll reach that goal or not, I don't know, but they have requested that it be tabled for today's meeting. Until until the first that, meeting that's, in March? That's what I was told. Now, whether they can get everything together by March for the first meeting in March, I don't know, but that, that is their intention to bring us back to the board at the first meeting in March. Dan, would you come forward, speak your name for the record? And Dan Garlick representing uh, AMM and George Floyd. Uh, don't even worry about March 1st. We're going to do it indefinitely. Oh. So we'll, we'll come back to you at some later day if that's okay. Uh, we got a bunch of things on the table. Floyd has to uh, table indefinitely until we get our ducks in a row. How do we do that? I mean, we usually have it. I don't do, know. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this live. So. Well, okay, that's, that's what I'm saying. Since last time we tabled it until this meeting, yeah. how, and now he's saying indefinitely, how do we? Well, let, let me do this. I, I agree with you. Let's do it till the first meeting in April. I'll say let's schedule it for the first meeting in March and let the board make a, a, oh, okay. a further review of the matter at this time. Okay. At that time, and in, in between that time and today's okay. date, the applicant can decide whether they want to withdraw or, or go, move forward with their. Because their that's what I'm saying. That's the way you're supposed to do it. If it's indefinitely, you're supposed to withdraw it. So uh, I'll make a motion that we table Mr. Floyd's application until the first meeting in March. Thanks a lot. And, and we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. And do we uh, have a date for the first meeting in March? Real seven, quick. Seventh, I think. Okay. March 2nd? Seventh. 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 Okay. March okay. 7th. Okay. Just, just for the record, uh, it, it, the last time we addressed this issue, there was some concern about the board tabling this thing and, and tabling and tabling and tabling and the timeline. So just for the record, this is being tabled at the applicant's request. That is correct. Not on behalf of the board or right. the county, but as at the applicant's request. So we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? I just yeah. want to put a date. Yeah, I just want to put a date out there, March 7th, March and then 7th. we'll make another decision come there. Okay, Commissioner Lockley. Yeah, it, like we table this stuff like this, we don't have no date that they're supposed to be done in between us. I mean, if we is we doing all right by tabling and do we have a date required to take care of business after you table so long? No, sir. In, in this case, the applicant is requesting that the board table this matter. Uh, the, the first tabling was at your request so that the applicant would have an opportunity to sit down with your staff 
and work through some of the, the questions and issues that arose at the first public hearing. Uh, in this case, the applicant is requesting a further tabling of this matter, so I don't think that you're in danger of violating any due process um, that the, the applicant is entitled to. In fact, I think you're actually going out of your way to provide him as much time as possible for him to consider his project. So I, I don't think you're, you're running afoul of any deadline that I'm aware of that you would have to make a decision. Mr. Pierce, do you have some comments on this issue? No, I was just going to say that okay. the, the, the planning and zoning report is also tabled, so it's all yeah. doing okay. both of you. Okay. And we, <coughs> we have made some headway. We met with uh, Mark on site the other day, and, and we, we concurred on some things and other things we're still trying to get our arms around it. And so Mark's been really instrumental in helping us up with this thing here, so we'd like to continue that on. Okay. Any further discussion by the board members? All those in favor? Uh, All opposed? Motion? Pass. Next would be, uh, I guess the the planning and zoning thing is over to Alan. Yeah, I presume that motion. That was that was went up. with. Yeah. Okay, yeah. covered both items. Perfect. Next would be Miss Marcia Johnson, clerk of the court. I don't have a report, but commissioners, I, since Pam is still here, I just wanted to give a thank you to Pam and her staff. She assisted the, the sheriff, myself, and our court admin with getting all the county employees in the courthouse new badges for security reasons and just wanted to turn her staff. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, take a five minute. <laughs> Board recess five minutes. When y'all gonna get me a new scarecrow? <laughs> Board of County Commissioners now back in section. Next on our agenda would be Alan Pierce with the Restore Coordinator Report. Okay, and as, as we have already talked, uh, the first bit of my report is uh, really all about FEMA and how I'll get a point. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and read it, and then I'm going to refer to this map in a second. Uh, and I apologize for the length of the report regarding how I'll get a point, but millions of dollars are at stake, and it's been a long history. And what I was doing, even without knowing that we were going to talk about uh, <coughs> The thing previously, I was trying to build into the record sort of some of the history that what, what I've done and what has been going on down there. So there is some information, you know, in the community about where how we got to where we're at. So that's one reason this, this report is as long as it is. Okay, on January 18th, the day after the last board meeting, Clay Kennedy and I and six representatives from FEMA met on site to review the situation on Alligator Drive. FEMA is willing to write pre PWs, which is sort of the check. When they write a PW and it's signed, it means we can go and make repairs. So they're prepared to write PWs, standing for project <laughs> worksheets, for repairs to the road from George Voss all the way to the intersection of Chip Morrison, including some damage on Chip Morrison. At one point, the county was encouraged to write up the entire damage area as one project, but on further review, they, we are going to divide it into two projects. The first section, and that section, unfortunately, the color is not very good, <coughs> uh, this red section here, it's about 1,000 feet. George Voss and Tom Roberts. It's a section of road that uh, those of you who've been down here point got washed out completely. It's a line rock surface now, but it's completely washed out. We had a, a rock revetment there, and we over the years we had moved the road and the rock revetment back to keep giving us space to rebuild the road. We are now on the northern edge of our right away. We can't move it any further. We, we are stuck between private property and the ocean. Uh, so the, so because that's a complicated deal, that would be one project. And then the section in blue will be a second project uh, because it's just easier for the workload that's going to happen out there. So the section from George Voss to Tom Roberts would build as one project. This is approximately 1,100 feet of road will be rebuilt to pre-storm conditions and will have additional improvements made through hazard mitigation funds. FEMA asked the county engineers to make two proposals for mitigation. A, a conventional sheet pile along the shoreline that would have some rock revetment in front of the sheet pile to absorb wave action and B, a concrete structure that ties both sides of the road together in such a way that the entire road becomes one unit and would resist erosion and settling from wave action. Because right now what we had out there was a rock revetment with uh, a concrete shoulder, no actually just a rock revetment uh, and then dirt uh, and then the road and there was, uh, and then there was dirt on the other side. So when the wave action during the last storm Bernine came up, it got the sand behind the rocks pulled the sand out, the rocks began to slump, then it got to the asphalt, pulled the asphalt out, and, and so, so what we are going to do is look at making a structure that is solid from the water to the other side of the road, which is our northern boundary of the right-of-way. 
so that when wave action comes in, it'll crash on the rocks or the sheet pile or the concrete or the asphalt or the concrete, and won't we'll be able to get into that sand because when it gets into the sand, that's when things begin to fall apart. Um, so that is the, the direction we're heading at, at this time. And it gets expensive to do that. So we have these two projects, uh, but upon cons consultation with Mike Dombrowski, the coastal engineer the county has used on Alligator Point for almost 20 years, the county engineering firm, which is Dewberry, has combined the two ideas into one proposal, a conventional sheet pile barrier along the water with paved concrete shoulders on both sides of the road so there is no exposed area for storm surge to destabilize the road. The estimated cost of this proposal is $2.2 million, and that's for the sheet pile. A second design was also proposed that would be rebuilding of the rock revetment, but using material on the size and scale of the revetment at the Gulf County stump hole. The estimated cost of the large scale rock revetment is $3.9 million. Mr. Dabrowski reviewed a third idea, which is the concrete structure that FEMA asked us to look at in a manner described as a, a, a option B, and concluded the cost would exceed the rock revetment cost, be, perhaps being as much as $5 million. So in order to provide the two most cost-effective designs to FEMA, the option B was not submitted. So we have submitted two designs. One is sheet pile, which minimizes the sort of surface on the shore. The second one is pile up rocks like you have a stump hole. That means rocks that are higher than the road, boulders the size of Volkswagens, and uh, you have a massive structure there that can take the impact of the wave. The president of Alligator Point had previously not worn all that kind of rock down there. Uh, it's also more expensive. So our preferred design at this point is sheet pile with this concrete cap on either side of the paved asphalt. Uh, I just think it's, it's, it's cost effective and more appealing aesthetically for the Alger Point community. <coughs> this is where it gets uh, expensive. The county has a match requirement of 11.5% of the cost. And unless that match is weighed by the governor, the county will need to expect to, to expend several hundred thousand dollars of a match. A match for the $2.2 million sheet pile option is approximately $250,000. A match for the $3.9 million revetment design is approximately $450,000. There's $455,000, I just checked this morning, in your ballpoint trust fund. Such a match would consume all of the ballpoint trust fund, a trust fund that has been in existence for 20 years and has provided matching funds for pre previous fixes to Alligator Drive. So and I'm going to stop right there from my, from my written there. So the reason that's a significant decision, and we, of course I, I don't see an option. We have to prepare this section of the road. The ocean's right there. It's going to take a substantial improvement, and the ballpoint trust fund has been a, a, a source of funds to have the match. I hope that um, the DOT is going to be down here on February 17th. They have yet to respond to the county's request to take this road over. I hope they do. I don't have any expectation they will, unfortunately, but maybe we can get their support to get a waiver from the governor so that we don't have to expend our ballpoint trust fund and have the state of Florida provide our waiver match. Uh, that would be a, a, a step <coughs> of an indication the state of Florida understands the severity of our situation now. So where we are right now on this, on this first section, this red section, is that uh, there's going to be a PW written, probably I'll sign it on Thursday, for $1.8 million dollars to rebuild the road. Because of habit mitigation, this section is a one-to-one, -one, we are eligible then for $1.8 million to put in the sheet pile. And so even though the road may not cost $1.8 million, and the sheet pile may cost a little more, putting the two together gives us a total amount of money of $3.6 million to fix this thousand feet of roadway. The engineers and I, we've gone to these numbers, we've gone to the FEMA, we think that money will be is adequate, uh, in fact, in excess, we hope, of what it really costs down there. But the problem is, unless we get a waiver, that $3.6 million, 11.5% of that, is around $400,000, and that's going to take almost all of the bulk of this one. It's a terrible way to end a career that you, know, you, you deplete the bank account and say, well, that's what I've done, but uh, it, it's a, we're in a bad situation. We need the state of Florida to help us. At the minimum, they need to give us a waiver, which we're entitled to because this, this kind of damage is in excess of what our normal expectations for repairs after a hurricane are. But the governor has to sign that waiver. Nobody else can do it. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Alan, I don't mind asking DOT for anything, so when they come down next time, we'll try to do that. But in the meantime, uh, we need to have support for that, you know, for the uh, asking for a waiver of the match. Because $450,000 is the ballpoint trust fund, it will deplenish it down to the point that if we have a major something else, we're not going to be able to tap into it, and that's not what 
we need to do on that. So we need to go in that direction. And like I said, I don't mind lobbying DOT, the governor, whoever else we got to lobby to get that done because they said on, you know, in, back in September, the state said that they would try to help us. So we need to get, if we can get that match waived. But my concern is this. You just made a statement that you, the, the road is all the way to the north, and we know that because I've been down there. It's all the way to the north. We have no right of way, right? Correct. We can't move any further north. And I, many times I sit up here and have to play the devil's advocate, and I'm going to play it right now. I'm concerned with what we're going to do to the property owner's property if we put that concrete barrier on the north side of the road and then overwashes in there and then it's going to take that property out. And that's what we've been accused of before in the past years of intentionally and knowing doing something that caused adverse effects to the property owner. I, I failed to make one thing, which I appreciate you pointing out. In this, one of the reasons costs are great, we are going to move the road back south a little bit. Oh, by doing that? Yes. One of the reasons the cost is so high, we were going to move away from the north edge right away. And I can't tell you how many feet, but we were going to be moving it south to give us room there on that northern edge, yes, so that we okay. minimize that risk. Okay. Uh, there, there, and this is not, you know, we are developing, a, working on a concept now, not design plans. But I spoke to the team yesterday, I haven't even spoken to either one of the plays, that I'm aware that in a storm surge event, you know, water is pouring on that road, pounding on that, <laughs> that road, pours on the north side, and gets impounded there. Where's that word going to go? Well, we, it's possible because the slope of the road is down towards this intersection that we would try and create a spillway almost over the road okay. so the water can then run back out, you know, down at the intersection of Tom Roberts uh, and get back into the Well, you, you've got that automatically. You've got that because the area in front of the KOA is lower, right. and so that's where the majority of the water go. goes. Right. But now that is with just a sand shoulder. But with the concrete, you're going to have to take extra precautions. Uh, that's, a, that's an issue that has not been designed, but, but we understand the water has got to go somewhere. Okay. And of course, all this has to be permitted by DEP. You know, but we can't get to DEP until we get FEMA to agree on a design bill fund. Uh, so that's sort of where we're headed now. <coughs> um, Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. How much of bridge did it cost to go across? Uh, well, in 2004, six or seven looked at it, the bridge was five million dollars. The bridge was more expensive than other things. And the bridge had other issues because once you build, you still have property down here on the south side that needs access. So you build a bridge and every hundred feet you gotta you gotta ramp off a bridge and it becomes really complicated trying to figure out how to build a bridge, a pile supported structure, you need to have access to everybody. Uh, but it was more expensive. So they still gotta have access to the property yeah. off of this supposed bridge. Which but, is going to really add the cost to. But do you have to have access to every house? I mean, don't it have to be? Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. You have to have. If you that, you, you will be considered as having condemned the property, then you have to pay for it. And, and it devalues the property. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can't access it. But there's two houses right there on it, right when you come to the end down there, one there and one here. Yeah. yeah. Are you, well, and 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 in, in real real looking at it a bridge would be the best solution but you got the property on it if, if that was all public land there you could do that it wouldn't yeah, it wouldn't yeah. impact nobody but you know the big storm may happen because i mean there's a there's a, a body of water back here that you know all you do is once you once you cut through that sand dune that dune line <coughs> uh, you know, let's be about the future it's, um, that's another storm are you wanting to move on with your Yes, yes, sir. before we yes, take sir. any action. Or uh, well, that, I think that I, I told you that I'm, basically there's no action by you. Well, I'm going to sign these PWs, which, which, which locks in the money. Then when February 17th comes down here, we'll talk to DOT, try and get an idea of support. I mean, by me signing the PW, it doesn't mean the county has to spend, you know, has to do the match. We're just trying to get the money uh, approved by FEMA. My question is, Alan, it, we need to start contacting DOT now mm -hmm. to let them know what we're kind of looking at and that we're expecting their support or else they can come in and take this road over and, and take care of it from now on. And having said that, looking at what you presented in our packet for commissioners to review over the weekend, you give a timeline and all the money that has been spent on Alligator Point Road. 
and that needs to be included in, in whoever speaks with DOT. Look, this is what we spent since this year, or, or the year that you're starting your synopsis, and, and let them know how much money the county has put in this thing over the years trying to keep this road up. And if we don't get a waiver and we have to deplete that ballpoint trust fund, there's not going to be any money to try to make any additional repairs until you get a small storm. So all these things need to be, and DOT is committed to helping us with this, as opposed to taking over the road, and we expect their help. And they need to know kind of what we're looking at and what we're expecting. And yes, we will talk to them when they get here on the 17th. But I pre I pre I pre talked. I have to, I've spoken to them, telling them, please be advised that you haven't responded in writing. You will be you will be faced in person then. You know, with this question of what are you doing for, to help us? I've already mean, told them that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a motion that we write a letter to uh, Department of Transportation, copy our legislative delegation and also the governor on request of helping with funds, or what the cost of, you know, waving a match or whatever to help with this Alligator Point Road. And uh, I put that in the form of a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, I'll oppose that motion carries, and that's kind of what I wanted to get okay. to before, you, before you start moving forward okay. on the rest of this, because it's so complicated, <laughs> right. it's going to be hard to go back and right. address right. these right. issues. Right. So. I appreciate this, Chairman. And you, and you did a cost uh, analysis of what we spent, I think it was yes. somewhere around six point something million dollars. Yeah, well, I provided it's yeah, 4.4, .4, I think, now, but yes. 4 .4. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I appreciate that. Oh, I'm sorry. 